Hey, it's David. This video is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be taking a look at my Google Slides train art. Now, before we take a look at the individual uh, trains, I'd like to explain a little bit about exactly what the Google Slide train art even is. So basically what it is, is on Google Slides, you have various different shapes and lines and things. And these allow you to make, mostly I believe for graphs and charts and other things that you need during a presentation. But I adapted it to be used as a, uh, basically like a way to make 2D images of trains and stuff. I've been doing these, I think, for o almost four years now, and uh, you'll see I've improved quite a lot since the uh, first train, which you're looking at right now, but it's something I, I don't think anyone else, I've seen anyone doing it, at least not to the capacity that I'm doing, and I think it's something fairly unique and pretty interesting, so make sure you watch to the end of the video, because some of the stuff in here I think is really interesting. Anyway, starting out, you can see the first train that I ever made in Google Slides, and that is this Rock Island 282 Mikado. And this I just made on a whim. I remember it was, I think, one of the last days of my 8th grade year. And I think we, I was in gym, and we weren't really doing anything. So I decided to go on my Chromebook. And for some reason, I don't know what it was, but I decided to um, use these Google Slide um, individual like circles and squares and things. And I was messing with them. And so I kind of figured that I could maybe make something with it. And so I found a reference picture of a train. I originally, I think I used a Bachman model of a 282 Mikado. And I started working on it, and I think I finished it within like 20 or 30 minutes, which you'll see is a lot different than the ones I do nowadays. But it's a very, very basic thing, very simplistic. Um, not a ton of detail, but not also not a terrible amount. Um, but it's the first one I made, so it's kind of special for that reason. But other than that, there's really nothing that crazy about it. Moving on to the next train, this is uh, 440 American type, and I believe I actually made this the same day that I made the first one. I think it was the night that I got home. I was kind of like compelled to make more because I was actually I really liked the way that the first Mikado came out at the time, and so I found a reference picture again. I think another model train because at the time I didn't think I would ever even get to the point where using a picture of a real train would even be um, make any sense because I wouldn't even be able to replicate close to that amount of detail, which you'll see again. It's much different nowadays, but this I think I had made in like 15, 20 minutes. Really simple. I mean, you can see it doesn't even have like a frame or anything. It's like a couple of wheels with a cab and a boiler on it and stuff. But overall, it's got the right shape of the uh, of the um, American type. It's got I think it's got better shaping than the Mikado, like scale wise and stuff. But again, very simplistic detail wise. But it was one of the first that I did. And then shortly after that, I made this one. This is my third one. As you can see, this is a 462 Pacific. This was based off of a uh, Central Railroad of New Jersey um, Blue Comet Pacific, I believe, number 833, as you can see. And again, I think I used a brass HO model for this. And this, and you can see, this one is definitely the most detailed so far. It's got relatively good shaping to it and some nice detail in certain spots. I still like the way the headlight and stuff turned out. But again, very simple, very, I said, like, things like the cab roof and the tender are all jagged and not very detailed. And the wheels, you can see, there's no rims or anything on them. They look very 2D, very fake, and there's no frame or anything. Um, very simplistic, but there's some nicer details on this still. Very simple, but this is actually, I believe, the last of the uh, Google Slides train pictures. I used a model train as a reference because you'll see I just keep improving to the point where I don't need to use them anymore. But at the time, this was my favorite one I had made yet, um, but now, I mean, I hardly even really look at it anymore. It's, like I said, nowadays to me, it's not great in any capacity, but at the time, I thought it was pretty nice looking. All right, next up is this New York Central 080, and this one, you can already tell, this is a big step for me. First of all, the detailing on this is just, like, way better, and the reason for that is this is the first one that I used a real train as a reference image and not a model train. Um, now, the actual proportions of this are really messed up. You'll see it's way too long for the actual 080. The 080 is a bit taller and a bit shorter and stuff, and the reason for that is the wheels are very spread out um, and just other things... I'm not the biggest fan of on this, but this one at the time was like a big step for me, like detail-wise and just certain um, methods of making it and stuff. Like you'll see on the drivers now, I have actual rims and stuff on them. Um, the cab, I actually I like the way the cab looks still. I think the roof looks all right still. Um, and this one also that coupler on the front, I believe I still use that design for the coupler on all my models to to this day. But this one, like I said, was a big step for me. Um, this is the first one I, I think I spent more than one or two days working on. I think I spent three or four, three, four, five, maybe even up to a week, you know, adding detail here or there, you know, until I got it to a point that I liked. Um, and I really kind of consider this to be the first somewhat decent 
image I made, but even looking at it now, I can see the proportions are all messed up and some of the details a bit simple. But for the time, I really like this one. This Oedo was actually the last train that I would make for a little while because it was summer break and I didn't really go. I'm making these all on a school Chromebook, right? And so I didn't really open my Chromebook at all, so I didn't make any really trains over Chris or over summer break um, until I went back to school in ninth grade. What you'll see is the next one here, this Alco um, Erie Berkshire. This is the first one that I made. I made this in ninth grade, um, and I, I like this one a lot when it came out. I like the, I like the way the drivers looked, and I like some of the detail and stuff. Uh, this one has a few things about it that I don't really do anymore. A lot of the piping was actual, not lines, but like the actual like squares and rectangles and stuff. And I think it looks all right, but it all kind of blends together, so I kind of strayed away from that. Um, this one, again, even more detailed than the last. I was using a real, a real train as the reference image. Um, still kind of strange proportions. You can see the boiler is way too skinny because I really haven't figured out how to kind of layer the elements and stuff in a way. And some of the details simplistic, but I do like how the kind of the cylinders and the drive gear and all that kind of look. Again, very simple, not the most detailed thing, but at the time I really liked how it turned out. The 284 Berkshire is also my favorite type of locomotive of all time, so that was kind of the uh, another reason that I was interested in doing this. But it's definitely not my favorite model now, but I think it was at the time. Okay, next up, the first diesel locomotive that I've made. This is a uh, Union Pacific SD40-2, I believe. It's also the only train I have with any any cars being pulled behind it, any cars that I've made. And this one I actually still think is pretty nice. I think the uh, the shaping on it and everything looks pretty good. I think it, it's a pretty accurate job of depicting an SD40-2. If anything, it's maybe a little short, but it's not too bad, I think. The detailing is pretty decent. Um, the trucks, I think, are fine. The cab and the nose and everything looks all right the uh, detailing along the sides is a bit simple though i didn't really bother putting in all the hatches and everything because that would take a long time um and again i was making these i was spending definitely less than a month working on these on and off when i say a month i mean like just here or there adding a few things i would maybe do most of it on one day and then stop for a little while take a break and then add do a bit more here or there so i would finish it over the length of a month but i really wouldn't spend super long working on them um at least at this point and yeah this is this this one's kind of another one that's it's all right um it's not blowing me away by any means um but at the time i thought it was pretty nice it was kind of one i just did to kind of occupy myself that's really what a lot of these were i had so much time in school and i wanted to pass the time doing something and so i figured that i would just do this to pass the time along because it was on my chromebook it was something i could do easily and it was a lot of fun so that's kind of why i have so many of these but yeah, this is, you know, you're playing run-of-the-mill SD40-2. Nothing super exciting, but a fairly nice um, picture for the time, at least. All right, next up is this 210 Decapod. Um, this one also kind of represents another change of mind. I've started putting the reference images I was using into a another Google document or Google slideshow. That way I could actually, like, kind of look through them better and zoom in and stuff on them so I can get some more accurate images. And so this one you'll see a bit nicer, more defined detail, I think. Um, again, not perfect. With this one but i think in general i actually still really like this one i liked how the boiler and the um kind of cab on un underneath that all that detailing i liked how that turned out um looking at it now i could tell the drivers are definitely oversized and i think they're not even perfectly circle i think i tried to change the size of them at one point and they ended up getting sort of oblong so not great um but one area i really liked when i made this was the drive gear i think that turned out nice um and there's some nice detailing between the frame and the boiler which isn't really even a frame still i'm just putting like basically lines in between the drive wheels to kind of simulate a frame but there's nothing really there um cylinders maybe a bit large but not too bad the smoke box is actually a lot of detail on it which i kind of like how that looks and i like how the top of the locomotive looks with the pull cord going to the whistle and stuff and this is like the first time i made a tender which almost a full tender you can see it kind of gets cut off at the end due to the restrictions of length but this is pretty nice and this is the first time that i made like kind of my own i call them custom shapes they're not shapes that are available to be used in the google slides charts but the way i make them is i'll use something as a base maybe to fill in a lot of the space and then i'll make a line to kind of fill in one side and i'll just fill it in with some more gray lines and stuff basically so i'm able to make some of the more um intricate curvatures and stuff which you'll see a lot of on the later things but this is the first time that i ever did that so i added a little bit more depth a little bit more detail to the tender of this but again this is one that i really liked at the time it's not perfect looking at it now but it's not so bad. Overall, I think it's a pretty nice little uh, locomotive. 
All right, next up is this New York Central GP9. And this is the first one that I of the few that I actually consider to be pretty good. Um, this detail, on or this this was uh, the second diesel look one I've been made after the SD40-2. And this was a big step up in terms of detail because now you can see I actually went through. I added all the little um, hinges and like just do like all the little doors and all the little details along the uh, side of the hood of the locomotive. And I really liked how this one turned out. Again, I think the proportions on it are really nice. I liked how the trucks and everything looked. I like how the New York Central Lightning Stripe goes along the side. I still really like that. And this is still actually one of my favorites that I've made. It's Like I said, it's a pretty simple overall. It's just a GP9, so nothing crazy. But I still really like this one. I liked how I really liked how it turned out at the time, and I think it looks pretty nice still. All right, now we're getting into this Alco Southern K-Class um, 280 consolidation. And this one also shows a pretty big step. You can see that in between the wheels, there's actually a real, like, frame there now. This one, actually, I really planned out before I started making it. I really wanted this one to be a big step. I really kind of thought about, like, okay, what actually goes into a locomotive, and how can I really replicate that? And so I actually laid out the frame and everything before. I put everything over top of it, and it just adds some even more depth and detail to this. Um, now, in real life, I think these Mikado, or not Mikado, sorry, these consolidations are relatively uh, plain locomotives in the boiler and stuff, but I was able to really incorporate a ton of detailing into this is, I mean, a bunch for the time and stuff. And I, this is actually the first like full steam engine I made with that engine and tender. Nothing gets cut off. Um, I really like how that tender turned out. It's a little bit undersized, but I still like really like how it looks with the rivet detailing and everything and the trucks and stuff. Um, I still like, this one is still an another one that I really, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it looks really nice. Uh, I kind of like how the boiler is more plain compared to a lot of the detailing under the cab and at the front of the engine and stuff. And I like how the bell looks being in the front of the engine but yeah this was a this was a pretty nice one when i made it another big step kind of for me and by this point these trains are taking me a long time to make like the ones before i would probably spend i don't know a week to maybe a month at the most working on and i think i spent maybe three months on and off working on this one um but this is i think the last train that i finished my ninth grade year of school. So just for example, I'm from the Berkshire to this, those were all made during my ninth grade year. So I had made, I think that's what we count here. One, two, three, four, five different trains during one year. And you'll see that that drops as time goes on, but that's just simply because there's a lot more detail on the models in the future, which you'll kind of see coming up soon. But yeah, this, I mean, this is, one I still really like. I think the proportions on it were pretty good. The detailing I really like on this one. And you'll actually see at the end of it, this is one that I chose to actually fully color in. Um, I don't do that with a ton of them, but I'll show you those at the end of the video. Now we come to the New York Central J1A Hudson, one of the most iconic locomotives of all time. This is the first engine that I did during my 10th grade year of high school. Um, and I really like this one. Again, this is another one. By this point, I like all of these from now on. Like these all, I think, look really solid. They all look really nice. A lot of detailing went into this one, a lot of planning beforehand to make sure I get things right. Proportions-wise, I think it might be a little short, but I still think it really just kind of nails that look of that New York Central Hudson. I still, this is one of my favorites. I like how the engine turned out. I like how the tender turned out and everything. And overall, I think this is still one of my favorites that I've made. Again, one of the most iconic locomotives, so I really wanted to get this one right. And I think it's a really good representation of the New York Central Hudson. And I say representation because none of these are really perfect i all do these by eye so the details might be a little bit undersized or oversized or in the wrong location the engines themselves might be a bit awkward in size and stuff but that's because i'm not trying to make perfect representations of these i'm really taking a picture looking at it and then placing things where i think they look and for the most part it turns out all right like i said you've seen a couple things where it looks a little bit off but overall i think they look pretty nice and this hudson i think is one of the best that i've made so far Next up is this Canadian Pacific 440, and by this point, I'm looking at a picture of a train, and I'm saying, okay, how can I replicate, like, every single detail? Before, I would kind of just try to, um, I would try to represent every detail, but not perfectly replicate them. But now, at this point, I'm really trying to nail everything. Um, you'll see this, like, this one, I think, is probably the most accurate one that I've made so far when it comes to scale and, like, proportions and detailing and stuff. Um, other than the drive wheels, which you'll see later, I found a way to finally actually add real spokes to them. I still think that this one's great. I'm, I think I worked on this one. I think it took me nine months, uh, you know, on and off working on it before I finished it. 
but you can really tell all that the time that went into it when it comes to the detailing and just everything that went into it. I mean, even the tender took a long time to do, but this one for sure, I'm really happy with. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it was in real life a beautiful locomotive, and I honestly think that this is one a pretty good representation of it. Um, I think the only thing detracting from it for me is the drive wheels. If I was to do it again today, I would definitely make those really actually like spoked and see-through. And but overall, I think this is one of the best that I've made, and I really like how this one turned out. All right, next up is this um, Santa Fe Dash 9. And this one I started at the end of last year, last school year, and then finished at this year in September, early this year. This one is another one that's just like really detailed. I the one thing that really stands out to me is that this one I really tried to s replicate how a 3D object would look in a 2D space, and so I tried to include like the accurate shaping of the hood and everything, and also underneath and stuff with the trucks and things. I tried to actually get like the traction motor detail and really wanted to just include every little detail that I could. This one took me, again, a long time. I started it, I think, in, I think, April of of um, 2023, and then I didn't finish it until late September 2023, so this one took me a long time to really get everything right, detail-wise, do everything, but it is a diesel, so it is a little bit more simple when it comes to getting the actual shaping of the stuff. The only thing that was really I guess had a lot of thought put into it was trying to get the shaping of the of the cab and everything right, which I think turned out pretty nice and stuff. I think I really like how that turned out. Um, and I also like how the Santa Fe lettering and emblems and everything looked on this one. But um, scale-wise, I think it's a little bit short. It's a little bit compressed. That's done really just because of the restraints of the actual side of the sli size of the slideshow and stuff. But detail-wise, I feel like this one is a really, really solid representation of the Dash 9. This one includes a lot of like custom shapes, like I said, a lot of things that I had to make using the lines and stuff. Not, and also a lot of other things I used actually um, to add depth in different areas and stuff. I used different colors of grays. Um, typically, everything is either this one dark gray color or this one light gray color, and that kind of represents just like the lines between individual parts and stuff. But I included some other colors to include like more negative spaces and also just like very slight things. Like there's a couple panels on here which have very slight. Um, I don't know, like, lines and stuff in them, so I use a light gray to just barely represent those there. But this one, again, definitely the most detailed diesel locomotive I've done. As you can see, I've only done three diesels. Um, this is by far my favorite. This is actually one of my favorite locomotives of all time, I think, is the Santa Fe Dash 9. Um, I am actually working on adding color to um, this. It's a work in progress right now, but there's a lot to be done with that because I have to color everything individually. Um, but yeah, this is, like I said, one of my favorites. I really... Like, the highlight of it to me is, like, all that underframe detailing and the detailing with the trucks and everything, with the shock absorbers and the air pumps and the traction motors and everything. And it's one of my favorites. Um, But it's also, this is the last, like, complete uh, train that I made. I'm working on one right now, which I'll show you, but this is the last one that I've finished so far, and it is still one of my favorites. And right here is my work in progress. This is a uh, Pennsylvania Railroad J1, if you cannot tell. Hopefully you can, because I want it to be somewhat recognizable. <laughs> But uh, this one is definitely the most detailed steam locomotive I've done so far. First of all, finally actually added accurate spoke drivers, which you can see. And I really went all out for this. I, I think I found six or seven different images. I even accurately modeled the frame based off of images I found of a, a Pennsylvania J1 frame. Um, I really like how the drive gear and everything turned out. Like I said, it's a work in progress, so it's yet to be finished. I've still got quite a bit of work to do on it, but for the most part, the bottom half of the engine... Um, from the smoke, from the smoke box to the back of the firebox is com finished for the most part. I really like how the drive gear and the drive routes and everything turned out. There's a, like I said, a ton of detailing on the underside of the boiler. There's a bunch of detailing in the front underneath the smoke box and between the cylinders and stuff with that, the air compressor detail and all the different steps and piping and all that stuff. The boiler's a bit bare right now. I've still got some stuff to add to that. Um, but there's a lot of very, like, subtle shaping and stuff. Like, the boiler has a very subtle, like, subtle bow towards the top. It kind of is tallest in the middle. And so I try to replicate that with a very slight kind of lean stuff. And it's somewhat noticeable. It's very, very barely in there. And, of course, that very uniquely shaped giant sand dome up top with the sanding lines and everything. But I can already tell that once this is finished, which I've still got the rest of the engine to complete and the entire tender, which... So that's that's a lot of work to do still. But I can tell that... Once this is finished, it's definitely going to be the best one I've made so far. Um, I started working on this one probably October um, this year. 
and it is now um, January, and I'm, I would say I'm about 70% done with it. So I'm hoping to have this finished probably by April or so, and I can start working on my next project. But as of now, this is my work in progress. Um, there is just a lot of detail on this. Some things I've never done before, like I said, the spoke drivers, and even to get the builder's plate to be legible, I had to actually make that large and then take a picture of it and then paste that in. So that's not an element that I made. Well, it is an element that I made, but not on this slide. It's actually an image, just so I could get it to look right. Um, but yeah, this is definitely going to be the best the best train that I made yet. This engine is my favorite of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and so I wanted to do it justice. And so far, I think I'm doing a decent job at that. Now we'll take a look at the three trains that I colored in. I don't really do this as much because I think it kind of looks... It just looks more cartoony, and it kind of hides some of the detail and stuff, which you'll see with the steam engines especially. But... The first one I did was this New York Central GP9. I gave it the dark gray and the light gray with the stripe and everything. Just wanted to kind of experiment how it would look. And I think it looks pretty nice. As you can see, it kind of made it like, a, you know, accurate looking road bed and rails and everything. Stuff like that. Just so it looked a little bit nice and more visual interest. But I think it turned out okay. Um, I think that I prefer it when it's just the gray and stuff. But it is nice contrast to see it all colored in and stuff like that. Um, the next one I did was the consolidation. And you can see what I mean with the black and stuff. It kind of hides a lot of the detail. And also when you have it all colored and stuff, anything that's not actually part of the model, so the white background stuff, really shines through. It kind of makes this look a little bit skinny, in my opinion. But it's not so bad. I think the boiler maybe could have been a bit thicker. I mean, a bit taller and stuff. Kind of went down to more level of the cylinders. You can see that really when it's colored in like that. But it's not so bad. I kind of like this one because I was able to highlight like the whistle and bell and the coupler and the drive rods and everything. Kind of makes it all stand out nice and stuff. I honestly feel like this looks like one of those model train product images you see online before they've got the real model done. But yeah, that's that. And then the last one I colored in, um, the Canadian Pacific. This one for real, you can really tell a lot of that detail just gets lost when it's all paint when it's all colored in black like that. But it doesn't look so, so bad. I mean, it's got the red windows and stuff, but it's kind of bland. Not super the most interesting when it's all colored in, but it's just another style, you know. Um, but that's it. That's my Google Slides trains. I've got other things that are kind of just like little experiments and things like that, but I didn't really bother showing them. Um, but maybe sometime I will. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed seeing these, um, maybe leave a like on the video or comment. And if you want to see more videos like this and about model trains and anything else like that, subscribe to my channel. But thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.